Hey everyone and welcome back to Home Drive-In. Today I'll be covering the 1981 film Ghost Story. Now since I will be discussing plot details from the movie and the book that it's based on, please consider this a spoiler warning for both. The graveyard was silent except for the steady padding of his feet as he went around the tombstones. Ghost Story was released in 1981 and tells the tale of the Chowder Society, four elderly friends who band together once a month to share spooky anecdotes, all while sipping brandy and smoking cigars by the fireplace. However, the group seems to be living a very real horror story of their own, as all four men are also plagued by nightmares, where it slowly becomes apparent there is an unspoken secret shared between them. After hearing of his elder son's apparent suicide, Chowder Society member Edward Wanderley falls to his death after witnessing a hideous apparition on a bridge, after which his youngest son, Don, consults the remaining Chowder Society with a few questions. What really happened to his brother? what really happened to his father, and who is this ghostly spectre intent on tormenting them. Based on the novel by Peter Straub, which enjoyed monumental success when first published in 1979, Universal Pictures purchased the rights for $225,000, bringing in Lawrence D. Cohen to write the screenplay. Cohen achieved success with his 1976 screenplay of Brian De Palma's Carrie, based on the novel by Stephen King, and was now tasked with condensing Straub's densely plotted book into a two-hour script. Cohen regarded the novel as appealing to more literary fans of the horror genre, comparing Ghost Story to the works of Edgar Allan Poe, building on a sense of impending dread rather than just being a more traditional spook story. However, during the writing process, it soon became apparent that much of the novel would have to be omitted, which Cohen admits caused him some grief, hoping that fans of the novel will still enjoy the film on its own merits. English director John Irvin, whose previous film Dogs of War earned some critical success, was entrusted by Universal producer Burt Westboard to take the director's chair for Ghost Story. Irvin was allowed to select his own heads of department, which was largely made up of a British crew, including Oscar-winning cinematographer Jack Cardiff, who helped Irvin create a very European look for the film. The cast of Ghost Story were mostly unknown actors. <laughs> I am so kidding. The cast is made up of some of the most legendary names from the golden years of cinema, including Fred Astaire as Ricky Hawthorne, Melvin Douglas as the frail and tortured John Jaffrey, and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. as Ed Wanderley, whose death in the film sets the story in motion. John Houseman also stars as the headstrong Sears James, who interestingly opens the film by narrating a ghost story, as he also did in the opening scene from John Carpenter's The Fog the year earlier. With films like The Exorcist and The Omen validating horror as a serious film genre, Fred Astaire was actually the catalyst in convincing much of the other veteran cast to return to the silver screen, since many of them hadn't actually appeared in a feature film for some time. Patricia Neal, who had recently recovered from a serious stroke, plays Ricky's wife Stella, alongside Jacqueline Brooks as Jeffrey's doting housekeeper Millie. Ghost Story would also be one of the first feature films for actor Craig Wasson, who plays the dual role of David and Don Wanderley. Yet despite its cast of legends, many of them would find themselves upstage by the performance of Ghost Story's main antagonist. South African-born Alice Krieg, who enjoyed critical acclaim for her role as a Gilbert and Sullivan performer in Chariots of Fire, plays the dual role of Alma Mobley and Eva Galley, who may or may not be the same person. The director was drawn to Miss Krieg, saying that she had a haunting otherness about her, in that while being physically present, her mind often appeared to be elsewhere, and her performance as the ghostly Eva almost overshadows the presence of her co-stars. Hoping to emulate the success of films such as Carrie, Universal Studios pinned its hopes on Ghost Story and allocated the production a generous $13 million budget, with filming taking place in such places as Saratoga Springs and Florida. Woodstock, Vermont, however, would provide the principal location for the fictional town of Melbourne, where John Irvin was hoping to replicate a rich New England feel, stating he wanted the town to look like something you'd find on a Christmas card. 
However, the freezing temperatures of Woodstock didn't always guarantee snow. Therefore, snow machines were used on set, combined with matte paintings by legendary painter Albert Whitlock to achieve the look required. Due to the age and physical limitations of the cast, much of the film was shot in short takes and from numerous angles, as the elderly cast were required to rest between scenes. In particular, Melvin Douglas, who was quite ill and required pain medication. Actor Craig Wasson was apparently humbled working with a distinguished cast, who were in fact very accommodating to the young actor, taking him under their wing and putting his mind at ease. Both Wasson and Craig, being relatively new to Hollywood, were in awe to be in the presence of their worldly co-stars, dining together every night and would listen intently to the stories that they had to share. Albert Whitlock became renowned for his matte paintings and miniature effects, having notably won a Special Achievement Oscar for his work on the disaster films Earthquake and Hindenburg. Whitlock joined forces with matte photographer Bill Taylor and artist Sid Dutton to create a number of snowscape shots for the film, which, before the emergence of digital matte paintings, was a little more laborious. What are you? After some poor test screenings, with audiences claiming that the film didn't have enough scares, the production called upon the talents of makeup maestro Dick Smith to save the day. Having created special makeup effects for films such as The Exorcist, Smith was brought in to provide some gruesome incarnations of the vengeful ghost, with several frightening apparitions constructed to provide a few pop-up scares throughout the film. However, one of Smith's most horrific creations didn't make the final cut. A hideous apparition with a gaping mouth that was truly the stuff of nightmares would however be recycled for the 1999 remake of House on Haunted Hill. However, makeup and matte painting wasn't the only examples of ingenuity provided for Ghost Story. In one scene, actor Craig Wasson in one of his dual roles was required to fall naked from a high-rise building. The effect was achieved by combining a background plate with footage of Wasson standing on plexiglass in front of a blue screen, giving him freedom of movement and negating the need for complex wire work. I'm just going to say it, the optical effect looks pretty poor by today's standards, but you can't deny the skills of Albert Whitlock and the effects team. French composer Philip Sard provided the soundtrack for Ghost Story utilising a 90-piece orchestra. The music overall is evocative and atmospheric, yet proved rather polarising upon release, since certain themes appear to conflict with the tone of the film. It almost seems as though Sard was trying to emulate a style that may have been better suited for a horror film of the 1950s, whereas here it often seems out of place and minimises the tension in certain scenes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too sure if this is the music I would have chosen for an elderly man having a heart attack. I will take you places where you have never been. To the start. I will show you things that you have never seen. Beginning. And I will see the life run out of you. Ghost Story hits cinemas in December of 1981 after having its release date pushed forward in time for Christmas earning approximately $24 million at the box office, doing well within the first few weeks before critique and word of mouth took hold. Critically, the film didn't fare too well. Praise was given to the cast and some attempts to create some mood and atmosphere. However, the film was blasted for being incoherent and straying too far from Peter Straub's novel. Roger Ebert, however, was far kinder to the film, praising the performances of the cast, calling Ghost Story a good film told with style. Ghost Story would be the last feature film for many of the elderly cast, with Melvin Douglas sadly passing away in August of 1981, before the film was even released, while Fred Astaire passed away in 1987, having retired completely from acting after Ghost Story. Douglas Fairbanks Jr. made a few appearances on television before passing away in 2000, while John Houseman also appeared on several TV shows before his death in 1988, yet not before his brief yet amusing appearance as a driving instructor in The Naked Gun. Gently extend your arm, extend your middle finger. Very good. Well done. 
Craig Wasson became a popular icon for horror fans for his role as Neil Gordon in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, but is also known for his voice work, including the narration of audiobooks from the likes of Stephen King and John Grisham. Alice Creek enjoyed success in the horror genre also, with her roles as Mary Brady in Stephen King's Sleepwalkers and Krista Bella in the film adaptation of the video game Silent Hill. However, for you Trekkies, you'll probably know her best as the Borg Queen in Star Trek First Contact. And is about the only reason I would ever watch a Star Trek film. Of the four actors who play the younger versions of the Chowder Society, of which we'll elaborate on shortly, sadly only one of them is left with us, with the tragic passing of two of these actors being eerily similar. Mark Chamberlain, who plays the young John Jaffrey, starred in the Broadway production of 84 Charing Cross Road with Ellen Burstyn, and later appeared in a few films, including John Carpenter's The Ward, before tragically passing away following a cycling accident in 2011. Tim Choate, who plays the young Ricky Hawthorne, appeared in several films and TV shows, including Pearl Harbor and Babylon 5, before sadly passing away in a motorcycle accident in 2004. Kurt Johnson, who plays the young Ed Wanderley, had a few film credits alongside Ghost Story, yet tragically died of AIDS in 1986. While Ken Olin, who plays the young Sears James, would notably go on to receive a Golden Globe for his role as Michael Steadman in the ABC series 30-something, of which he also directed some episodes. He would also go on to direct episodes of TV shows such as Alias and This Is Us. Screenwriter Larry Cohen would go on to write the screenplay for other adaptations such as the 1988 miniseries It, as well as the 2013 remake of Carrie while director John Irvin would go on to direct such films as Raw Deal with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Hamburger Hill. Ghost Story was originally released on VHS here in Australia by CIC Video and later on DVD by Umbrella Entertainment. While in the US the DVD was released by Imagine Entertainment and on Laserdisc by MCA Universal Home Video. Yet arguably the definitive release is the 2015 Blu-ray by Shout Factory containing an audio commentary by the director and interviews with Alice Krieg, screenwriter Lawrence D. Cohen, author Peter Straub and more. The film's soundtrack by Philip Sard was originally released by MCA Records in 1981 on LP and cassette, with subsequent re-releases in 1990 on CD by Varese Saraband, all of which contained 10 tracks each. While an expanded edition containing 19 tracks was released in 2019 by Quartet Records. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't offer some comparisons between the book and the movie, and while the central premise of the film is also a major part of the novel, it is only a fragment of a much larger story. Another reminder, I will be going into spoilers for the film and book. I have provided chapters, so feel free to skip to the conclusion if you don't want them spoiled for you. The film is broken into three narratives, the first being the four elderly members of the Chowder Society, including Edward Wanderley being haunted by nightmares. The second is a flashback story of Edward's sons David and Don becoming involved with a mysterious woman named Olman Mobley, while the third narrative is another flashback of the Chowder Society and their youth, who develop a friendship with a woman named Eva Galley in the 1920s. When Edward and Eva become romantically involved, he unfortunately proves to be unsuccessful in the intimacy department. He hides his inadequacies by implying to his friends that he had indeed scored. Yet when Edward and his friends make a drunken visit to Eva that night, things get out of hand. And when Eva threatens to tell the others of Edward's impotence, he retaliates, fatally wounding her. Placing her body in a car and driving into a pond, she seemingly wakes up, much to the shock of the four men who unsuccessfully try to save her. Thus they vow to never speak of the incident to anyone, including each other. Fifty years later, when Edward's sons become involved with Alma, we're led to believe that she is a manifestation of Eva, seemingly using them to seek revenge on their father and his friends. The film also introduces brothers Gregory and Fenny Bate, played by Miguel Fernandez and Lance Holcomb, who are in allegiance with Eva's spirit, helping her seek revenge in exchange for immortality. However, in the book, the central antagonist is actually not a ghost at all, but a shape-shifting entity known as a Manitou that not only threatens the members of the Chowder Society, but the entire town of Melbourne. The character of Eva is merely one of the many forms that the shapeshifter assumes throughout the novel 
and as is alluded to in the film, assumes different personas in an attempt to seek revenge on the Chowder Society and wreak havoc in the town. The Bait siblings in the book are revealed to be of the same species as Eva, with the character of Sears James, once being a teacher of the younger brother Fenny, attempts to protect him from his abusive older brother. The novel also included a fifth member of the Chowder Society, Louis Benedict, a retired entrepreneur whose involvement was ultimately dropped from the film. Knowing the book helps to understand some of the more elusive aspects of the film. For example, the Bait brothers barely have enough screen time to serve the film's narrative, and with no previous connection to the Chowder Society mentioned, their inclusion seems to have been shoehorned in to appease fans of the novel. Having read the book myself, I believe the story begs to be made into a television miniseries that could handle the scope of the source material and allow some of the more intricate plot details of the story to unfold. That is one for the suggestion box. While Ghost Story is elegantly shot with some eerie moments and standout performances, the attempts to layer in unnecessary aspects from the book does result in an often clumsy and tonally inconsistent film. Nonetheless, I think Larry Cohen was clever in extracting the basic premise of the four men with a guilty secret to be the main premise of the movie, working well enough to make the film worth seeing. And while Alice Krieg may well be the standout, I also absolutely love Fred Astaire in this film. His character exhibits some genuine charm and energy, considering he was 82 years old at the time. The film also contains some impressive makeup effects, despite their inclusion seemingly more for shock value amid the sophistication of the surrounding production. Ghost Story has enough genuine thrills to make it worth your time, if only for the delight of seeing the sign-off appearances of its older cast and the standout performance of its main villain. Thanks a bunch for watching this retrospective, everyone. I will be back next month with another one and something else in between. I'm not quite sure yet. But in the meantime, if you want to do the like, share, subscribe thing that makes channels like mine grow, I'll love you forever. Until then, be good to yourselves and each other. Take care.